Cold Rock Stores Closing. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Got my Stein here of coffee, don't worry it's not Guinness today. And I thought we'd look at this article about Cold Rock Stores Closing. And it's due to rising cost pressures that the franchise manager is unaware of, but the store or franchisee is letting people know. Now, one of the issues that Cold Rock has is that for staff working into the night, they have to pay a higher rate and it makes it you know, unaffordable to run the business. And I've, I've had clients that are in the restaurant game and they've exited entirely because it's just not enough money into it, in it, in the sector. So how often do you hear of restaurateurs going under? I mean, paying someone 50 bucks to carry something across the room per hour is insane. Okay, it's insane. That's where our minimum wage laws and all these, you know, uh, penalty rates are destroying jobs and making businesses unaffordable. So then you'll only have the super big businesses like Maccas and all these other ones that have their EBAs, that are negotiated directly with the unions, that are different, different to the small businesses and often are unfair. So, but you know, why would we want that? No, no, no. So, two Queensland cold rock stores close amid rising cost pressures. It's an Australian institution, but there are signs of trouble is brewing for Cold Rock Ice Creamery after two branches abruptly shut down. A frustrated franchisee who suddenly closed down two Cold Rock stores this week has warned more closures are likely. On Monday, two separate Facebook posts revealed the popular branches in Springwood and Indrapilly in Queensland were now closed permanently, immediately prompting an outpouring of anguish from ice cream fans and loyal customers. Now, I I went to the Indrapilly one years ago, years ago, and oh, I think it was a date with a girl at university when I was studying economics, you know, in a completely different life. And I remember, you know, you get all the ice cream, they, they put all the, the lollies and things in there. I was annoyed, I expected more lollies for what I pay, and a tiny little bite sized Mars bar cost like 50 cents. So I thought they were making good coin, but you know, still, it's, it's ice cream. Adding all the things to it is a, it's an interesting, interesting point of difference. I enjoyed it. I don't eat it too much anymore, but call, that's because I've got four kids. If I go there, it's going to cost me a hundred bucks in ice cream. <laughs> I'd rather buy a, a tub at the uh, shopping center. But that, that's just probably the stage of my life I'm at now. And, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Thumbs up if you can relate to that. Going out with the family. Bloody expensive. So Cold Rock is owned by parent company, franchise food company Proprietary Limited. And director Stan Gordon told news.com.au he had only discovered the closures this morning. I had no idea those stores were going to close. It's not a precedent of what's going on at Cold Rock. And in fact, we're opening stores. We're certainly not closing them, he said. But, I mean, how can he now legitimately argue that he knows what's going on in his franchise chain if he was surprised by the closure of these two stores. Yeah. Doesn't that put a hole in his argument? Perhaps. I mean, the sea level people, they're probably too high up or maybe he's not paying enough attention. I was absolutely surprised by the closure of these stores, particularly the Springwood, Springwood store, which is a profitable, good store. I've got no idea what's going on. Well, there you go. I mean, that's that's nuts. Why is he talking to the media then before he has no idea of what's going on? Yeah. Regrettably, Cold Rock in Rapilli is now closed permanently. Mr. Gordon said it was no secret that retail was doing it tough, but said Cold Rock in general was stronger than ever. He said the company aimed to reopen affected stores as soon as possible and that he hoped staff who had lost their jobs could be rehired. We're in the business of making ice cream, making money and having fun. People need jobs and we'd like to continue to give them, he said. Well, no, you're in the, you're in the business of selling franchises. You're not in the building, you're in the business of selling franchises and making money. Isn't that what he's in the business of? 
Mr. Gordon said he wasn't sure of the specific circumstances of the closed stores, but said while he supported penalty rates, they were a problem for the wider industry. Well, yeah, they are, they're nuts. They are literally nuts. You're paying low skilled workers insanely high rates for inconveniences that probably don't exist these days. You know, people live a 24 hour day. You know, we don't have restricted trade. You know, I remember when I went to Brisbane on a Sunday because I grew up on the Gold Coast and the Gold Coast, we had Sunday trading all the time. And I went to Brisbane to go shopping on Sunday. I caught the train up there and went to the mall and everything was closed. Everything was closed. I couldn't believe it. That was back when they didn't have Sunday trading in the city of Brisbane. I was shocked. It was a ghost town and it seemed so strange to me. It really did. And here we go. Regrettably, Cold Rock Springwood is now closed permanently. There absolutely should be penalty rates, but they should kick in after a 38 hour work week. You can't pay kids circa $50 an hour when they work weekends without it becoming cost prohibitive. However, that's the system we have to work with. So I have to find ways to work around it. See, that's the issue. That's the issue. 50 bucks an hour. So what's going to happen? These two businesses now are shut down. We'll see if, if the franchise manages to get them up and running. But this is I heard the same thing from restaurateurs. And how many times on a public holiday are the businesses closed or not running? Or how many of these small cafes or businesses are run by the owners? So that's the thing. I mean, it's crazy. It is just too high. These wages are frankly too high. You also hit back at claims the cost of doing businesses with delivery platforms like Uber Eats, what's affecting the bottom line of franchisees. I agree they're charging too much. However, that's their cost of doing business and stores don't have to use those platforms, he said. Now, this is interesting. Just remember what he says here, because there's another thing in the article that, that puts that in a different light. And they're not losing money by using delivery platforms. They might not be making as much, but they're not losing it. I think I actually did a few cold rock deliveries uh, for ice cream when I was doing Uber Eats down the Gold Coast. You know, cold, rocks, cold rock businesses are profitable and my reports from a week ago show things are all good. So I've got no idea what's happened. However, Don Bramby, the director of uh, Bramby Enterprises Proprietary Limited, which owns both the Springwood and Indrapilly stores, told a very different story. Although Mr. Bramby has never met with Mr. Gordon, he says he'd had numerous franchisee meetings to voice concerns with franchised food company that his complaints had fallen on deaf ears. The reality for me is I've got a business and essentially franchise food company refuse to listen to the franchisees about the lack of profitability. Mr. Bramby told news.com.au. We've had numerous franchisee meetings with them uh, where we had long debates about lack of profitability. They've been totally silent on reducing the cost of goods because they're on a rebate system, which means there's no benefit to them for having cheaper goods. See, the thing is, everything you buy as the franchisee, you buy from Cold Rock. You have to buy all your, if, even if you go like, I don't know, to a shop and you get your Kit Kats cheaper in bulk, you need to buy them from Cold Rock. It's, it's just nuts, the franchisee model. It's nuts for people getting into it. Sure, I mean, they can be money makers, but yeah, check. Double check everything, guys. He said Mr. Gordon may not know about what was actually going on in stores as the pair had never met during the five years Mr. Bramby, uh, Bambry had been a franchisee. Mr. Bambry said franchised food company took a royalty from orders placed through Uber Eats, which meant that for a $20 order, 30% would be taken by Uber Eats. However, the royalty would be taken off the full 20%. Sorry, the full $20, not the amount that remained after the 30% had been deducted. So th that's the thing right here. Look at this. So FFC were taking their royalty off the $20 sale and not taking account of the Uber Eats cost. That, that seems... 
<sighs> it seems ludicrous. Well, I, you know why they do it with these businesses. It's so they that the franchisees can't um, destroy their profits to nothing. Uh, it, it just seems, yeah, it seems crap, honestly. It's in contrast to a franchise such as Subway, where they take the royalty off the net figure, which is obviously a more reasonable way of doing business, he said. The reality is we're damned if we do, and we're damned if we don't. So here we go. Um, Mr. Bambury said he wouldn't be surprised if there were more cold rock closures to come. The real surprise would be how far away the next one will be, he said. He told the Courier Mail rising costs over the past year had made the business all but impossible. If I go on the dole tomorrow, I'm going to bring home more money I did for the, than I did for the past 12 months, he told the paper. Well, there you go. So, some details. Cold Rock Ice Creamery launched in Aspley, Queensland in 1996. There are now more than 90 stores across Australia. It is owned and managed by the franchised food company and is 100% Australian owned and made. It became an Australian institution thanks to its wide range of ice cream flavors as well as mix-ins which allow customers to choose from a range of gummy bears, chocolate bars and other treats to add to their dessert. But it sounds like, well, two things here. The FFC, the franchise owner, is really maximizing their profit and the penalty rates are making unaffordable for the business to be viable. So now no one has a job in two shops. What do you think, guys? Do you think the penalty rates are fair? Should a kid make an ice cream be paid 50 bucks an hour just because it happens to be on the weekend on Sunday? Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.